Hey guys, welcome to the Asus ROG Winter 2014 Replay Recast. I'm Shaft, your host from the Clinic Casting Crew. My co-host tonight representing Team H2O PMS, or maybe it's PMS H2O, I don't remember exactly the order, but my good friend, Drew Universe. Hello, good to be here. Ah, yeah man, you're waving, but you're not actually visible right this second. But he did wave at you guys. <laughs> So we're about to be casting one hell of a Zerg vs. Protoss, man. Well, would you like to introduce the first player? Yes. In the top cor uh, top left corner of Heavy Rain, we have the blue Zerg, EG's Jadong. And down here on the bottom right-hand side of Heavy Rain Ladder Edition, in the green trunks, it's Team PK's Protoss. Gungvu Banda! Gungvubanda did go for a gateway first opener. This is going to allow him to get a uh, cyber core much faster than a forge first or nexus first build. The one downside to this is it will cut into his economy. It takes two probes to build a mothership core. So with that uh, being said, um, he's more than likely going to try some kind of mid game aggression, uh, especially knowing this guy's style against Jadong. What do you think Jadong's going to be going for here, Drew? Oh, well, I've seen the uh, hatchery coming up very quickly for him. I've seen him do this plenty of times. A lot of players do it with the pool afterward. He feels comfortable uh, handling any early aggression from the Protoss player, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, right now they're just doing a little dance with uh, Probe and the drone in the back there. Yeah, pylon does get canceled. That pylon was to force these drones to be pulled off the line. He was scared of a cannon rush, seeing as he did go hatch first. He is not aware that his opponent has open gateway first, only now getting the Overlord in a position to be able to tell. That's right, but while he's there, he will notice the expansion coming in right after it, and Jadong knows that he might even be safe for a third if he wants. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Um, so it looks like my FPS is jumping around a little bit. Let me uh, change one graphic setting real quick. Sorry about the on-the-fly change, folks. But we'll drop it down to low settings, my computer. For some reason, giving us some issues, but yes, that looks just fine. All right, so um, Cybercore is about halfway done. We've got the first gas and just now completing for Jadong. How important do you think the metabolic boost and possibly roaches will be here? I think it's going to be pretty uh, critical on the timing. Uh, right now, Jadong has no army supply until just this moment with the first two Zerglings and the Queen coming out here in a second. Uh, the, the gas also came up later due to the hatchery and the pool, so he won't have link speed for a while. Um, but if he dances around good enough, I think he'll be able to handle... Uh, whatever Gung Fu, Gung Fu brings out. He's got the Zealot out now. Now we're going to be uh, getting the Warp Gate just now. It'll take a while for him to get started. But yeah. his Nexus is up, and he should have the economy to start uh, powering up here. Yeah, these two Lings being sent in mostly for scouting, it looks like. He does see the expansion. He sees one gateway on the way that could just be for a wall off. He harasses the probe just a little bit, but uh, he's going to go ahead and run on home. The earliest timing that Gung Fu Banda could show is about five and a half minutes. Um, so he's only just now getting the gateways. It's definitely not going to be a five and a half minute timing. We're looking anywhere from seven and a half to nine and a half minutes now if he chooses to do gateway pressure, which he is working on warp gate. That he is. And it looks like he's going to just wall off at the natural and be comfortable on two base for the time being. And as I had imagined, it looks like Jadon will get that third, knowing that uh, he'll be comfortable with that as well. The Protoss player is sticking with the two base, probably going to stay there for a while and not do too much outward aggression, protect his uh, natural, so he keeps his economy intact, which gives Jadong the freedom to have the map control at this time. But it does look like Gungfu is going to send out a probe with his Zealot and the Mothership Core, so we'll see what he's going to do with that here in a couple seconds. Looks like it's going to be a little four gate pressure. As you can see, the fourth gate is on the way. Both of these overlords being sent in. Uh, looks like Jadong could get supply blocked if he loses this overlord, but three overlords are in production, so he'll be okay in just a matter of moments. We'll see if he can manage to hold off this pressure. He is now scouting the Mothership core, and this uh, probe is building the pylon right here on creep, so he's completely aware of that as well. Uh, he's got 16, 18 lings now in production. He's working on another gas, so hopefully we'll see a roach worn thrown down here shortly. That might be the case, and uh, this pylon will get cancelled just barely in time. I was actually imagining with the queen there could drop an extra cre creep tumor to disable the pylon from being in use at all, having nowhere to build, but in any case was cancelled. 
Uh, the Ling Speed just finished a moment ago, and these Lings will be surrounding the Probe and the Zealot. Most, of course, going to get a few pot shots, but knocking out that Zealot is important, and a couple Lings is worth it at this time. Yeah, eliminating that Probe uh, completely nullifies this attack. There will be no more pylons, and thus the Mothership Core is going to have to go home. Now, Blink is on the way, and this map in particular, notorious for Blink, uh, due to the ability for the Stalkers to park themselves right here and Blink up and down. That is going to be why we saw J. Dong's uh, third base uh, in the position that it is. That's right, man. And while the Mothership Corps didn't come in back home right away with this link pressure, wouldn't have been home in time to do an initial Fulton overcharge right off the bat and could have taken some damage on these gateways. Uh, it looks like Jadong hasn't chosen to aggress just yet, giving the Mothership Corps time to return and not have to uh, recall back or anything like that. We have a Hydralisk den on the way, my friend. We're going to be seeing a Hydra Link. He is getting the plus one uh, missile attack upgrade as well. So he's going to be completely ready for these Blink Stalkers. Ling Hydra, amazing against this composition. It looks like he's actually going to come poke out with these Stalkers, though, until those Hydras are done. It's just these Lings, and uh, these Stalkers have more than enough power to pop them out of the way for now. Uh, lots of lanes in large number actually will do a lot of damage to stalkers, but right now they can roam free across the map and get some map control work towards that uh, potential next base for Jadon. Already popping the Overlord right over there, and he has a proxy pylon in place for quick warpins. Yeah, so this gateway pressure going to be uh, coming from the angle we predicted, but the probe going to fall here, so if he can manage to take out uh, this pylon somehow he will be in a good spot as you mentioned stalkers take a lot of damage from lings one the lings taking out one of the stalkers but without ranged units here to do damage the lings do get out dps so uh hopefully the lings will be able to hold the stalkers in position while the hydras do most of the damage but this is looking tight that's a lot of stalkers and only a couple of hydras that's right the stalkers have actually blinked up into the main and the hydras are going to crawl up there they don't have the uh, speed upgrade just yet, the group spine is about to finish, and it looks like they will. Uh, he'll try to surround it, but he doesn't have too many hydras here, and the blink is going to be really good from Gung Fu, losing no stalkers, I think, yet. And he's got the advanced forward pylon, even in addition now, already next to Jadong's next possible base. He's just powering through this with so many blink stalkers, these hydras are very uh, squishy, even if they deal a lot of damage. Absolutely, dude. That's why you need huge numbers of links, which we're just not seeing out of Jadon. You've got to love the positioning of the Stalkers, the way he got up on the top of that base, and then use the time warp to stop the Hydras from being able to get a good concave. That's right, and now the Hydra is going to be actually trying it again, but once again, these Blink Stalkers just can switch their terrain anytime they want, pretty much, with that short cooldown, mm -hmm. and actually try and get down this, this uh, layer tech and get rid of it. Um, I think he's got it. He does now, and he's just gonna be able to walk away from this anytime he's ready. Actually, cornering himself, not around any terrain he can blink away from. So these hiders might be able to pick off these remaining stalkers even with blink. But actually, the recall will be used. Gung Fu knew that he could do that, and uh, he gets out of there with the free base. That was some excellent play from Gung Fu again with a time warp on that ramp, taking out the layer. Forcing Jadong to build another layer. Uh, he's still got the Hydralisk Den, so he's going to try and make something happen. But there is no detection for our Zergy McFerguson, and Dark Templar are on the way. That sounds about deadly to me. Without that uh, layer tech, I believe there's no ability to make an Overseer, and uh, he's going to be blind for a while. I mean, the only other detection option there really is, I believe, would be the Spore Crawler, and that's not going to be very viable out here on the map without any creep spread at this time. He does have his bases connected, Jadong, but uh, there's no creep spread throughout the middle of the map whatsoever. Gung Fu has been pretty uh, aggressive and uh, maintained his aggression throughout. I, I see that Jadong, you know, he tries to poke in here and there, but he really doesn't have the uh, ability to take him out head-on just yet. I mean, you've got the big... Hydralisk army here, but like you were saying before, not enough lanes to supplement it. Normally I see roaches supplementing Hydra. Roach Hydra is a very popular uh, type to use. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, the Dark Temple are going to be trying to poke around here from the south. One staying by the pylon, but two are advancing and can cause a lot of damage right now. Overseer is actually going to be more, but there's still many seconds away, and they might be far from the Dark Templar. Oh, actually, those Dark Templar run right into a pack of Hydralisks, and an Overseer was able to catch them. Great pickup there by Jadong. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that extra Overseer there up the north. I thought he just had the two cooking over by the south base, but that was a good pickoff there for sure. That's a lot of money investment on those Dark Templars. It is, uh, especially with the tech as well. Um, I, I think Jadong might have known it was coming. The Killing off the lair 
plus the fact that he went Blink Stalker. Blink Stalker is almost always followed up by Dark Templar, so I think Jadon was just able to read the situation properly there. I think so too, and he actually is going to be working more on his creep spread. He actually is spreading to the south where he's about to detect this uh, forward pylon at the south. He is right there, he's about to see it, he sees it now. And he'll be able to knock out that ability from Gung Fu from uh, advancing. Mm -hmm. I think all the other proxy pylons have also been disabled. I don't see a single one around the map. So Gung Fu will not have immediate reinforcements unless he brings a warp prism coming in. Exactly. So this is actually looking pretty good for Jadong. However, he has got a huge bank. He is not producing quite as much as he could be. He is working on the Hive, though. He's back on four bases against the Protoss three base. So you can't count him out of this. In fact, he's got a much bigger higher army supply count than his opponent but constant harassment uh, and scouting because these are hallucinated phoenix um, but constant scouting here by Gungfu Banda is going to allow him to know exactly what his opponent's doing at all times and be able to uh, pinpoint any weaknesses in the Zerg play. Now seven infestors are about to complete so the stalkers are essentially going to be eliminated from this army. I'm interested to see exactly how Gungu Banda will choose to uh, transition. He is working on the plus two uh, attack, working on some immortals, and he's getting zealot legs. So eventually we're going to be seeing high templars, uh, charge lots, and uh, archons. Right, and I think he's actually trying to fake out his opponent Jadong here. He had hallucinated a Colossus that Jadong saw a couple of times, so he might be fooled into thinking he needs to prepare for some Colossus play, but he might be able to call that bluff as well and know that it's not really going to happen. He's actually going to take out these rocks in the middle for a little bit of easier uh, pathway walking, and uh, while you're talking about Gung Fu doing the correct scouting and all that, I also see it from Jadong as well, mm -hmm. with a couple of uh, lings, two or three lings, at both of the next potential expansions for Gung Fu to go to next. So he will know the expansion timings, or at least know when the army is slightly out of position. So the Spire is about a third of the way through. I think Jadong is responding to these hallucinated colossi, because uh, Corruptors are your best bet against colossi. He may also just be setting up for a Mutalisk switch, so we'll see. Here come the Hydralisks and Infestors. Good force fields here. He's got High Templar. Can he get a Psionic Storm in time? Uh, because that was a, would have been a great point right there to uh, drop some Psionic Storm. Of course, Jadong, way too smart to fall for uh, such a tight choke point. He was trying to catch his opponent out of position. That's right, and with those few Hydra losses, it was a good pickup from Gung Fu, but uh, Jadong has so much resources available right now, uh, has been undisturbed on his bases for quite some time since that initial lair snipe, mm -hmm. that he is able to more than resupply uh, with those lost Hydra lists, and even do much more than that. He's got over 2,300 minerals, he can do almost anything he wants right now. He's working and, um, on 17 spine crawlers, my friend. This is yes. how you expend minerals as a Zerg, this late in the game. Try to conserve your gas for big tech switches, spend your minerals not on not on things that die really fast. No, stay alive with spine crawlers. Now you got to also admire the eight roaches managing to take out this fourth base of Gungu Banda over here in the middle right corner. Yes, and actually left a Ling burrowed over there uh, where the cell is looking for something. We'll also stop that expansion, force detection from Gung Fu if he wants to expand to the right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Well, man, so I see the fifth for Jadong now and the top. He's going to, um, that's, I think, I know it's a, a bit of the ways out of the way for a uh, walking path on the ground, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's out of the way pretty well. When I play, even though I'm a lower league player, when I uh, try to expand uh, my third, sometimes I take it in that back corner. You know, they don't really check there that often. It's almost like Polar Knight without the rocks to destroy. Yeah, exactly. Plus, you end up with a nice little angle where you can uh, build some spine crawlers. This is a very easily defensible base, especially for Broodlords, and we see the Greater Spire com uh, completing just now. Seven Broodlords on the way. Can Gung Fu Banda attack before the Broodlords complete? Look at the number of High Templar here. He is uh, dropping some key Psionic Storms. There we go. Good blink. He's trying to keep these Hydras out of position. He does not want to engage the giant giraffes that will headbutt him. Uh, he's just trying to bait the Hydralis off of the creep and in the meantime content to, to take out some of this creep. Yes, that's right. It looks like if he wanted to, he could snipe this uh, base that just got finished by Jadong, no longer able to be cancelled. But actually, while uh, Gung Fu is poking up in the north by these spine crawlers and broodlords, there is a counterattack of roaches breaking down the natural wall of Gung Fu, and he's actually sending in his whole Hydra army right up to the third and causing damage that way, relying on keeping just part of his army, his infestors and broodlords, back with the spines to fend off that main army of Gung Fu Banda. 
Yeah, he's buying a large amount of time with the Broodlords. He's got to be careful, though. He has nothing parked underneath the Broodlords, and that solid blink right there is going to eliminate a lot of the Broodlords. Uh, he's only got one or two fungal growths left. He's going to have to be very careful. Now he's got the Broodlords over top of the spine collars. This is exactly where he wants them. He's eliminating a lot of these Stalkers and the Immortals over here at the third base. He has eliminated it with Hydras, and the Roaches have knocked out the pylons for most of the gateways and robo facilities in the natural there's only about four producing gateways oh make that seven but still the production has been destroyed by Gung Fu Banda who has lost a huge amount of his army Jadon can continue to restock his army this is not looking good for our Protoss player not at all, my friend. The natural is gone, even with that, not too many minerals left. He didn't mine quite a bit of it. It is going to hurt to put it back. He's considering putting it back. He will actually put it back, even with so few minerals available. That's his best defensible position for now at the moment, with all of his remaining building placement. Is going to redo his third as well, though. Both players have some money to recoup after that. But like you said, Jadong in a much better position to resupply after trading uh, so effectively there. Does get that burrowed zergling so he can expand there when he's ready to. Um, I didn't see the observer with before, but it's going to be key from now on, I think. Uh, with these creep spreading this far out, now the right-hand side isn't covered yet, but the left-hand side is completely covered in creep, and that's going to be a big problem if Gung Fu needs to get that lower base again in the future. Mm -hmm. You know what I would love to see out of our Zerg right now? What's that? Swarm Host. Oh, Swarm Host and Broodling combo? Mm -hmm. Well, honestly, he's uh, lost most of his Broodlords. I think he should uh, use them as effectively as he can and then immediately switch out of Broodlords and go for the Swarm Hosts uh, with like some Roach Ling support. Um, that sounds like a good idea. With the Broodlords, he's lowered his speed, and the Infestors of course, but he's lowered his speed to that of the Protoss player. Mm -hmm. If you switch out, you know, sometimes you need these kind of units, but uh, the Zerg is known to be more mobile than the other races in general. So I think uh, to keep the crowd control going, uh, Jadong is going to need to keep the creep going as best he can to increase the speed of those infestors a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the Broodlord is still so slow, I think he might need another option. Um, although they're great, you know, if he yeah. can keep wrecking with them, so be it. Well, one of the best things about Zerg is the quick ability we have to tech switch. For instance, a Protoss or a Terran have to build extra uh, Stargates, extra... Uh, factories, stuff like that in order to tech switch. We don't. We just need one tech structure. So that's something I love to see Zerg players utilize. Now we've got a little bit of a positional war going on. Some good fungals going off. A nice ionic storm, but it's mostly hitting broodlings. Here we go. Now it's hitting the broodlords, and they are taking a lot of damage here. Looks like Jadong's going to be content to trade this uh, as cost effectively as possible. He's trying not to get his investors stuck in this little choke point, and the broodlords doing a great job sieging from the high ground. As they are. And uh, we actually see behind this that the, the extra bases are coming back up. Even extra assimilators ready to get plugged in. I see them queued up for this extra base here, here on the right-hand side. Hosts. Oh, yes, we do actually have the swarm host. You predicted that very well. And the upgrades coming in to follow it with the spine crawlers coming forward. Jadong feels secure in that his third base um, near the main is going to be fine. He left some spines there and a spore for detection. Mm -hmm. um, one DT going to be harassing up top here. I don't, didn't see if he lost that base. But Jadong, mm -hmm. in any case, is poking up front, and only some force fields are preventing those infestors from coming forward to do some more aggression. Yeah, and the beautiful part about these forward spine crawler positions is, uh, you know, his creep obviously being so close to his opponent, but he can get the Broodlords back very quickly to the defense. The one thing he has to be careful of with the Blink Stalkers is them blinking underneath of the Broodlords. So when he's assaulting, he's keeping the Broodlords over these rocks, and that is what's making this Broodlord attack so effective. As soon as the Blink Stalkers get into a situation where they can get underneath the Broodlords, he's going right back to the Swarm Host Spine Crawler wall. And now the spine crawler wall moving forward even further. Avoid Ray trying to poke in, but a couple infested Terran beach balls should be the elimination of that. And Gung Fu is trying to actually do some counters right now. He's bringing in a warp prism, took a lot of damage from a Hydra and a Spore, but actually gets into the main, is going to warp in. It looks like a lot of Dark Templar here. There is an Overseer right overhead, but if he gets out of range of the Overseer, uh, he's going to be able to go roaming free. Um, and an extra Spore in the, in the main here. Not he was going to try and clean up this DT in the top, but uh, the Zerglings got picked off, and he moved his Overseer back down. Looks like Jadon going to take out this extra base once again. J uh, Gung Fu actually taps out right there. Yeah, there was just too much going on for Gung Fu Banda. He played an amazing game with the constant scouting, uh, with some really strong 
harassment, especially with the techniques of taking out the lair, uh, blinking on top of the, the high ground, time warping that ramp. He really played a textbook example of what you want to see in a Blink Stalker matchup on Heavy Rain Ladder Edition. But the thing that he really uh, could have done a little bit better was tech switching out of the stalkers he produced them for a little bit too long i feel and that delayed his archons and stuff he needed to stop the brood lords from snowballing i can agree with you there i mean uh, i gotta give it to gung fu ham panda though uh for what he uh, had in both of the key engagements with those infestors and brood lords uh while the storms are very vital i also saw some really key feedbacks that popped a couple of infestors in each engagement mm -hmm. so um he definitely gave it his all to try and disrupt the zerg player from doing too many fungals or infested terrans or whatever jadong would have chosen and um, because actually for a while it was just it was broodlord and fester purely and part of his army and um with the blink stalkers that I mean that was so 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 risky i believe you know there's no meat to back it up except for the infestors and they can pop for those feedbacks with like nothing he's got to keep spending his energy to make sure they uh, won't get feedbacked exactly man but still some amazing games we're going to be moving on to uh game number two between these amazing players um what are your predictions for this uh, next game? Um, well, honestly, I'm not too sure. I'm not too key on you know what the the players are thinking up at the higher levels. I mean, I can imagine, but uh, they could choose one of any number of things between the the, the aggression plays and the expansion plays. It depends on their comfort level and how they feel against that particular player. I'm sure these guys study each other plenty, um, so they've they've seen them play and they kind of can know what to expect. But you got to be ready for anything, so you got to keep doing that scouting. Um, I could see Jadong doing another early hatchery. Uh, but depending on what each player reads into each other, they might, you know, think they find key weaknesses that they can exploit. So I can see some aggression from at least one of these players coming out in the next match, probably. Yeah, you just mentioned uh, these players being able to study each other, and that's a very good point. I think Gung Fu Banda actually has an advantage in that sense alone, because there's so many games of Jadong playing, like all the way from Brood War till now. Right. Gung Fu Banda, a fairly new at least relatively speaking, a fairly newcomer to the scene where he doesn't have that many high-profile games that can be studied. I think you're very right there. Um, I've seen him be casted by Husky uh, quite a bit recently, but I hadn't heard of him ever before, even though I'm new to the StarCraft scene in general. I know that Jadong is one of the more um, well-known ancient players, if you will, mm -hmm. and... Um, even if, you know, certainly Jadon can pick anything he wants. He can pick aggression, he can pick fast expand, he can do whatever the heck he wants. He knows the different plays and he can execute any of them pretty well. He also is good with almost all of the unit types. However, when you're studying another player, uh, it's hard to see it in yourself, but another player can study you and find tendencies. Mm -hmm. And that is what Gung Fu Banda is probably looking for here. Exactly, man. Well, we are going to be moving on to game number two. Guys, if you like this broadcast, um, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, give us a plus like on, fav or, uh, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, send it to your best friend. Send it to your mother. Send it to your sister. Send it to your grandma because she needs to know the glory that is StarCraft before she passes away. Okay? Guys, it's important. See you on the flip side. Bye bye. 신할 선수가 되는 거고요. 그렇죠. 멀티에 방해도 받지 않으면서 안전하게 해주고 있는 모습인데 맹동축의 스피드업이 되기 전에 즉 전방 위에서만 싸워야 되고 전방만 또 제거하고 빠지면 돼. 네.